Alright, hello everybody, it's your boy Andy from Hampshire Flag, and today I'm going to be bringing you an 8.1 Azurite trait guide to know what the best traits are for your warrior in the current state of the game. Just know that right now, this is before the 385 pieces of Azurite gear have the 5 traits on it. We're still stuck with uh, whether or not you have 385, 370, you still have 4 traits no matter what. I've just been messing around with some uh, different builds and I've come up with one that's really good. And I'm also going to be talking about the pieces of gear that you should be shooting for once the gear change actually does happen. And I'm going to be going over the different pieces that you can get if you're going to be playing this with PvP or if you're more of a mix between PvE and PvP, uh, which is, you know, no, no shame. It gives you a lot more chances to get some decent gear. And it's not just going to be talking about, you know, pieces that you can get from the, um, mythic 10 chest that you finish up and you know you get the reward every reset uh but without further ado let's go ahead and uh, start this i'll show you what i'm running right now i have a piece um with a new trait called unbridled ferocity and what this trait does is essentially it gives us extra damage on rampage depending on what item level you have the azure piece of gear uh it'll be higher or lower on the bonus damage for your rampage it also gives you a four or eight percent chance, sorry, uh, to gain recklessness for four seconds. I've had a lot more luck in this proc with two pieces, so I am running two pieces of this, and I'll explain why. And I'm also running another one of the new traits called Cold Steel Hot Blood. And what this piece does is essentially when you crit with your bloodthirst, it gives you uh, four rage, and then on top of that puts a bleed on the target which deals a lot of damage to them for example the bleed that mine puts on is uh, 4050 over six seconds and it also heals me for that amount well, when it whenever it takes um, this helps out a lot with self-sustain it gives more survivability and I mean we don't necessarily have to stack crit in order to get this to work we can get a lot of this work done in recklessness and we can get this bleed off on multiple targets as long as you're lucky enough to crit on multiple targets with your bloodthirst uh so essentially this is really good uh, dotting up you know warlock warlock pet hunter hunter pet or if you guys are cleaving in like 3v3 you can um you can hit both of them with a bloodthirst it will not apply if you get a crit your whirlwind double hit you guys know what i'm talking about when you whirlwind in the next two single target melee abilities will also hit the, an, an additional target or multiple targets but that's besides the point let's go ahead and just keep the ball rolling i'm gonna go ahead and uh, show you guys bloody mallet really quick let's go to the web browser this is a site i've talked about a lot i'll leave another link to it in the description but i'll also show you more or less what the site is about really quick right off the bat it highlights the trinkets portion uh, this just shows you what the best trinkets are at certain item levels, like the Kajified Banana at 340 item level, it gives you three or 636 DPS, um, and this is just when it procs and you're you know, going through your cooldowns and stuff, this is how they simulate it. Um, and at 400 item level, this thing is actually a beast. As you can see, Deck of Fathoms being stuck at 355 item level. Uh, it still has a lot of value on it. It still gives us 1k, almost 1.1k if you round it up roughly, uh, DPS. And then, you know, you have all these other trinkets as well, but we're not talking about trinkets in this video. Let's go ahead and just talk about the Azurite traits really quick, uh, because that's all this video is about. So, Reckless Fury, still sitting pretty high, actually, even though they nerfed the, uh, the damage amount that you get with your auto attacks by half. Um, Battlefield Focus and Precision, same thing, um, talk about these really great traits, nothing against them, uh, and there's no particular reason I, I swapped them other than I was curious to see how this, uh, this new trait build would work, and it synergizes very well, um, but as you can see, both Steel Hot Blood, same pretty up there. Now on top of that, we have, where's Unbridled? Unbridled Ferocity is simming way higher than Simmering Rage just because it gives you a chance to get your burst, like just one trait. Gives you uh, 748 extra DPS when it procs. 
if you just go off of the green spikes if you're not planning on trade stacking um this is a lot there's a lot of damage boys as you can see though even the uh, cold seal of blood is saving way higher than just one um piece of battlefield focus and reckless flurry so i mean let me explain the build a little bit as i go over the actual pieces of gear that's going to help you guys get a visual more or less of what's happening in this so the best in slot headpiece for the new season is going to be the pvp headpiece that we're in really good shape because these two have the exact same maybe just a different defensive trait but as long as you're doing pvp you fill up your um your conquest bar you have a chance to have this pop up and um we're greeted with a uh, an entire new ring of uh, choices so we're not we're gonna stay away from polarizing blows we're gonna go for infinite fury in this build um, we're also gonna go for unbridled we're gonna go for overwhelming and then this is a new defensive trait essentially what it does is it gives our fear more utility so when we use intimidating shout on targets um, uh, once it, it breaks once the duration is up It'll apply 50% slow, and that slow, uh, uh, I haven't seen like an actual little debuff timer on it, so it, I think it just uh, persists until they break the damage cap because uh, it also prevents the next lump sum of damage. I think at 370 item level on a piece, it, it absorbs up to 1500 roughly of the next uh, amount of damage they deal, which is pretty big. That's half a burst from like an assassination rogue right there with the Vendetta on you. So if you stack this trait, it's really good too. I mean, it has its uses in PvE obviously as well. Uh, if you're, if it's a bad like mythic week and you want to uh, help your tank out a little bit with big mobs. And then obviously you go for the Azure Empowerment whenever you have the, the level cap for that. Um, and that just buffs up the rest of these pieces. All right, so let's talk about why we're gonna be prioritizing Infinite Fury on these pieces if it's not Cold Blood, Hot Steel, or um, Unbridled Ferocity. The reason being is because Unbridled Ferocity gives us a chance to proc our Recklessness, which either is gonna be like randomly through Rampages when we have downtime, no burst, or uh, it'll extend the duration of our burst actually and that has happened to me and this synergizes really well with it because if you're not stacking a lot of crit through your armor this gives you the ability to artificially stack that crit up and that also increases our chances of applying our bleed of uh, cold cold blood hot so it's, it's just a win-win it's like a, a big cycle of synergy with all these traits. I'll go ahead and show you guys the traits for the uh, PVE variant of this, which is the Soul Spun Cask. And this is a chance to drop from Atal Dazar. So hitting it at 385 would probably mean uh, getting lucky with your Mythic 10 chest of the week. Uh, so this piece actually has Recklessness and Infinite Fury. Now Recklessness isn't bad at all because it also does um, reduce the cooldown of Recklessness by one second. Uh, through your auto attacks and it also gives them additional damage. So this is a total a totally fine like viable option I would still um, urge maybe infinite fury test it out, you know, I mean um, I'm gonna be testing the water a lot more uh, Between these two if I do get this headpiece just to see what sims higher I, I don't personally have it right now, but the uh, defensive trait is uh, in passive visage and this gives you a heal anytime you take damage it can only happen every six seconds or so and then you power it more healing uh, more damage more damage and I, I, I'm assuming they give you more credit but I don't know but yeah th this is gonna be the build for both head pieces uh, if not you could like I said mess with reckless flurry a little bit let's go ahead and go to the shoulder pieces this is actually a world drop from the Arathi Basin um, world boss the big tank guy there's an alliance version of it, and that is this, uh, and then this is the raid version. I'll show you the traits really quick for the, um, the world boss drop. So now simmering rage, pulverizing blows, umbrella ferocity, heed my call, and passive visage. Um, so for this piece, it's it's I would go with simmering rage just for more rampage damage. Might as well just capitalize on that. Plus, it gives you more rage. Uh, this obviously we already talked about this is really good. We go for heed my call on this piece and then passive visage. 
Uh, this is for both pieces. This, this is just going to be capitalizing on a lot more single target damage through your rampages, making it huge amounts of, uh, of single target pressure in arena. Um, this is the raid shoulder piece that's going to be uh, once they release the new raid. And uh, the infinite fury, we're going for 100%. Umbrella ferocity, we'll go for heed my call and intimidating presence since it's available, as well as azurite or empowerment whenever you can. Um, really good piece. Heed my call is actually really good. I've been I have two pieces uh, of it on my current set. I don't know if you guys saw that. I'll show you again after we're done going over all this. Really good. Um, I don't know if they're going to be raising this to 385, but this is actually a uh, chance to to drop from like the cash that you get from doing the four world quests in um, Zuldazar. So, I mean, we might be able to, to scrounge that out of this. I'm, I'm actually kind of uh, sad because this ch this uh, shoulder piece actually shows that it has cold steel hot blood on it. I just don't see where exactly supposed to be I mean, maybe the site is bugged because now it's only showing me four um, when whenever the piece actually does come out as long as it has cold steel hot blood infinite fury on the outer trait or um, unbridled ferocity on the other outer trait because you can stack both of them if they both have um, the availability on the piece of gear you take those uh, I don't, I'm not sure why these are um, different I, I really don't but Either way, let's go ahead and move on. Uh, we're gonna go to the chess pieces. This is the PVE chess piece. Now, this is um, a raid piece actually that is gonna be uh, in the new raid, obviously. And this piece has both of the traits. I'm personally gonna be shooting for it. I don't really raid myself, but just for the chance to get this piece of gear, which has everything we need, everything. We have un overwhelming power. We have resounding protection on it. Which is just going to give us a shield in PvP. It's going to be, uh, like, right now roughly what my uh, current resounding protection is supposed to give me 1200 uh, barrier. But in PvP, they put that down to about 5k. And I have three pieces of it, so I got about 15k worth of uh, a bubble. Um, really good trade. And, I mean, like, I, I would love to... Uh, to put this on any piece I can't honestly uh, but yeah cold steel hot blood as umbrella ferocity we got overwhelming power which is giving us damage and haste um, and then a shield it's a, it's a really good jack of all traits uh, piece I'm gonna be aiming for it personally but the new season chess piece is actually very 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 good as well cold steel hot blood umbrella ferocity the only difference with this piece is that it has Gut Ripper instead of Overwhelming Power, and on top of that, Self-Reliance. So if you're able to, um, like maybe you guys are uh, getting cooldowns from them, just want to get the Paladin. <sighs> just want to get the Paladin in a bubble, or Force Block, or Force Dispersion, whatever the case may be. You guys uh, are, are planning on getting their big defensive, resetting a little bit, and then going back in. Self reliance is totally good, um, as long as there's no nobody within 12 yards of you, which also means if you're caught in a rogue 1v1, um, you're gonna be you're gonna get a lot of your health back. Uh, it's gonna force them to have to not do the reset game where they wait for all their uh, cooldowns because then you're topped off and they're gonna be in, in like a really bad spot because Fury Warrior actually treads the rogues, if you guys have seen in, in any of my videos. Um, but yeah, no, our, our uh, PvP shoulders for this season are gonna be really good. I'm actually, or chest piece, I'm sorry. It's gonna be really good. It's basically the same piece as the, um, the raid chest piece, except the raid chest piece has a different defensive trait and overwhelming power instead of gut ripper but gut ripper is also really good uh, especially if we can get both bleeds off at the same time and it applies more when they're at 30 percent which means an execute range is just that much more pressure uh, so overall really solid for both pve and pvp and if you, as long as you guys are going with the same build that i've been uh, pushing um I, I feel like you're gonna have no problem climbing ladder 
uh, your rotation is going to feel a lot smoother and I mean you're basically just getting rewarded for playing the game which is essentially what any class should feel like uh, especially with talents and stuff like that you don't have to necessarily worry about the RNG so much um, this is more like a bonus because we already do so well and without the traits I was able to do pretty well um, in 8.01 in 8.1 this build is just pretty nasty um, but yeah, let me know. Uh, I'd, I'd encourage you guys to try it out yourselves. If you guys can get the pieces, obviously, uh, it's not simple as, you know, hey, go to your, do a Mythic 10, you'll get this piece. No, I mean, it, I know it's a chance drop. Work with what gear you have. If you happen to have these pieces on you that have Cold Steel, Hot Blood, or Unbridled Ferocity, um, stack them. And I mean, just let me know. I mean, personally, I feel like having uh, two Umbridals and one Cold Steel in the current state of the game, where there's not an outer ring to synergize a lot more with, um, is just fine. So I, I, I personally can't wait until I'm able to get some Infinite Fury traits in my, my pieces of gear and messing around with that because I feel like I'm going to be doing a lot more damage and a lot more of my rotation is going to be a lot more impactful uh, when I'm running someone down but um, that's gonna be it for me guys I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday uh, if you guys you know if, if you guys don't really celebrate the holiday I still hope you have a good day you know um, enjoy the time you have with your families and I'm I just wanted to say really quick thank you guys again for all the support uh, all the follows on Twitch, it means a lot. Um, I also wanted to ask what kind of content you guys would want. If you guys want me to go over some more builds, if you're not necessarily feeling the whole Cold Steel Hot Blood and Unbridled stack uh, with Infinite Fury build, it's totally fine. I can go over some other builds that would, uh, would also be really good, like synergy-wise. If you guys would like some more arena commentary videos, I have no problem doing that as well. I'm also going to be pushing my Monk to 2k as well through double DPS 2v2 arena. Um, if you guys want to see a little bit of that, totally fine. I was thinking personally once the new season actually hits and the season resets that I was going to uh, maybe make a video series uh, starting from 0 MMR and going to 2k just so you guys can see the process um, that I go through in order to get to 2k doing this kind of a non-meta comp um i mean it, maybe that'd be helpful i mean i'm just trying to help you guys out as much as i can it, provide you guys with the tools and information to help you grow and get to this uh this rating as well because i feel like you know the only difference between someone that's 2k and uh someone that's stuck at like 1500 is maybe just a little bit of um, game knowledge you know I mean like you, you have to understand the matchups uh, you have to understand uh, what I like to call frame trapping uh, it's a whole different terminology that, that, is, that I've understood from fighting games that I apply to this which is basically if they do this I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna lock them into a bad situation um, I can go over that a little bit more in another video but this is going to be all for me for the moment. Uh, like I said, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much and goodbye.